welcome back to my channel. This week I'm sharing four different dinner ideas. These are gonna be really hearty and delicious dinners. They're gonna keep you warm and cozy in this cold weather. It finally just warmed up here a little bit, but we were in super cold weather for a couple of weeks there. I'm so glad it's warmer, but these are gonna be some really awesome ideas for when the weather is super cold. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Caitlin. I share a lot of really quick and easy dinner ideas, crockpot dinners, but things that are just really quick and easy to put together. If you're a busy mom or you're working a lot, these are gonna be perfect for you. So definitely hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and get into all of these dinner ideas. For this first dinner, I'm making a Mexican tater tot casserole. Our whole family loves this one. It's definitely a favorite in this house. So I'm starting off with one pound of some lean ground beef, and then I'm adding in one large onion that I had chopped up, and I'm just gonna cook all of this completely through until the ground beef is all the way cooked, and the onions are nice and translucent in color. Now once that is completely cooked, I'm gonna be adding in one can of corn as well as one can of black beans. Both of those are rinsed and drained and then I'm also adding in one can of Rotel tomatoes I do like to drain the liquid off and then here is a can of some enchilada sauce and then I'm also gonna be adding in one packet of taco seasoning mix you could also make your own at home if you'd like and then I'm just gonna heat this up for probably about five to ten minutes just until everything is heated through After the mixture had heated through, I'm adding in about one cup of some Colby and Monterey Jack cheese, and then I'm also adding in about one cup of some shredded cheddar cheese, and I'm just gonna stir this up and let it melt into the rest of this dish, and then I'm gonna be adding it into a casserole dish. For this recipe, I'm using a 9 by 13 casserole dish and I am going to spray it with a little bit of oil. And then I'm just taking all of that mixture that I just made up in the skillet and I'm pouring that right into the bottom of my pan. You want to make sure this is in a nice even layer before adding on your tater tot. I used almost a full two pound bag of tater tots. Now you can use a little bit more or a little bit less just depending on your preferences. You can also line them up, but I was in a hurry and I just wanted to get this in the oven. So I just kind of dumped them on and spread them out. But I baked this in a 370 degree oven for right around 35 to 40 minutes. Everything should be really nice and golden brown. During the last five minutes, I do like to add on a little bit of extra cheddar cheese on top, let that melt and then it should be good to go. This is such an awesome dinner idea. It's really quick and easy to throw together and definitely a family favorite in this house. For this next dinner, I'm making a loaded potato soup. This one turned out absolutely delicious. If you like potato soup, you will love this one. So I started off with cutting up about six pieces of bacon and I just cooked those up in my Dutch oven until they were really nice and crispy. You could also fry the bacon and cut it up, crumble it later, but I chose to cut mine beforehand and it worked out really good for this recipe. So after that is really nice and crispy, I'm just removing that over to a plate to let the oil drain off a bit. And then I'm adding in about half a stick of butter into my Dutch oven and I'm just going to let that melt. After that butter has melted, I'm just adding in one large onion that I had chopped up and I'm just going to saute this for about five minutes until the onions are really nice and cooked through. They should be translucent in color. You will definitely be able to tell the difference once they are cooked. After they are cooked, I'm adding in a couple big scoops of minced garlic and I'm going to let that cook up for about 30 seconds until it's just nice and fragrant. You definitely don't want to overcook garlic or it will burn and then it's not going to be good. So cook that for just a couple of seconds and then you're going to want to add in three tablespoons of flour and I'm just letting that mix into the onion and the butter mixture. After the flour is well combined into the butter, you're gonna to want to add in all of your liquids. So this is four cups of chicken broth. You could also just add one carton of chicken broth from the store. I'm also gonna be adding in my potatoes. So this is about two and a half pounds of Yukon cold potatoes. I did go ahead and peel them and cut them up. 
And then I'm also adding in two cups of milk as well as two thirds cup of some heavy whipping cream. And then for seasonings, I did about one teaspoon of ground pepper. The recipe called for one and a half teaspoons of salt, but I added the other half teaspoon later. And then you're also going to want about a half a teaspoon of chili powder. You're just gonna mix all of this up and let it come up to a boil. Once the soup is boiling, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to cook the potatoes all the way through. Now, once they are fork tender, you're actually gonna take about half of the potato soup and you're gonna put it into your blender. Or what I actually decided to do is use my hand mixer. I didn't really wanna put all of this hot soup into my blender. So I used my hand mixer and it worked totally fine. I definitely think this was the easier method rather than putting it into the blender. Or if you have an immersion blender, you can use that as well. I do I do have an immersion blender, but I could not find the attachment for it. So I ended up just using this hand mixer and it worked totally fine. So you want to blend up half of that soup and then add it back into the pot. And then you're gonna let this cook for about 10 minutes. You are gonna add a couple of other ingredients though. So here is about two thirds cup of some sour cream. This is just gonna make it super, super creamy and delicious. And then I'm also adding in all of the bacon bits that I cooked up earlier. That's gonna give it some really good flavor in this soup. And then I just mixed all of this together and I let it simmer on low heat for about another 10 minutes. This soup was so good. If you like potato soup, you're absolutely going to love this one. I did top it with a little bit more cheese and some extra bacon bits that I had and it was so delicious. Now this next dinner is one that I have shared a couple different times on my channel, but I'm gonna be making some chicken parmesan in the air fryer. So I'm starting off with adding in about three quarters cup of some Italian panko breadcrumbs, half a cup of some Parmesan cheese, and then you're gonna want about one tablespoon of some dried parsley. Here's about one teaspoon of just regular salt. And then you're also going to want about half a teaspoon of some black pepper. And then you're just gonna mix all of this together. This is going to make up the breading for on the chicken it's super flavorful and delicious but really easy to put together Now into this other bowl, I'm just cracking two eggs. This is what we're gonna be dipping the chicken in for coating it. It's gonna help the breading actually stick to the chicken, so just whisk up those eggs. And then onto a third plate, I'm gonna be adding just about half a cup of flour. Again, this is just going to be for coating the chicken. Now for coating the chicken, I have two large chicken breasts here that I just cut them in half lengthwise so they're really nice and thin. You definitely want to have really thin chicken for this recipe. It's going to stay really juicy and tender and then you're also gonna get a good bite of the coating in every single bite that way. So definitely make sure that you cut your chicken breast in half. You're first going to dip them into the flour mixture, then into the egg wash and then back into the Italian panko breadcrumb mixture. Now you definitely want to get a really really good thick coating of that panko on there. It's gonna make it very nice and crispy. If you've never tried your hand at breading chicken before, I promise you it's really quick and easy. It only takes a couple of minutes and it turns out so good every single time. I'm gonna be making this chicken parmesan in the air fryer. You can also make it in the oven if you want to, but I'm making it in the air fryer today, so I'm adding a little bit of olive oil just so nothing will stick. I don't like to use the spray on the actual metal part of my pan, so I will just use a brush and brush on some olive oil, and then I will add a little bit of the cooking spray on top of the chicken, and I just try to not get it on the air fryer just because I've heard that it can affect the non-stick ability on this one. So that's what I try to do. I'm going to bake this at 350 for about 8 to 10 minutes on each side. It might be a little bit more or a little bit less just depending on your air fryer and also the thickness of your chicken, but it should be golden brown and you want to make sure that it reaches an internal temp of 165 degrees. And then in that last minute of cooking time, I'm just adding on some marinara sauce and some mozzarella cheese and I'm just going to pop this back in there until the cheese is all melted and it's going 
going to be absolutely delicious. This is one of our all time favorite recipes. It's one that I always like to make for date night. It's also very budget friendly. So if you are trying to find a good budget friendly date night dinner, this is such a great option. It's very affordable and we absolutely love it. Our toddlers also really like this one. So it's just really family friendly all around. This next recipe is actually going to be a meatless meal. We're gonna be making some stuffed shells. So I'm just starting off with about 15 ounces of ricotta cheese, half a cup of some grated Parmesan cheese, as well as about two teaspoons of some dried basil. Now the recipe also called for some dried parsley, but unfortunately I was out of it. So I just substituted with one teaspoon of some dried oregano. And then to bind all of this together, I'm adding in one egg and I'm just giving all of this a good mix together. This is going to actually be the filling for our stuffed shells. If you like ricotta cheese, I think you will really enjoy this one. I personally am not a huge fan of ricotta so this wasn't my all-time favorite meal but if you like ricotta cheese in your lasagna then I think you would really enjoy this recipe. I just set that filling to the side and now I'm cooking up my jumbo shells. So I cooked the whole box, but I definitely did not use the whole box. You're probably gonna want a little over a half of a box. I did go ahead and salt my pasta water and then I'm just cooking them up according to the directions on the back of the box. Once they were completely done cooking, I am going to drain them off and rinse them with some cold water. Now that is just to prevent the pasta shells from sticking to each other so you can actually fill them a lot easier. And then we are moving over to my casserole dish. Of course, I'm just gonna spray that with some oil. And then I'm adding in about half a jar of some pasta sauce, or you can also use marinara sauce. I chose to use this tomato, basil, and garlic one just for some extra flavor. And then I also added in a couple tablespoons of water here, mix that together, and then I'm gonna be adding in my pasta shells. Now it's time to stuff all of our shells. So after they are all rinsed off, they shouldn't be sticky or anything. You should be able to open them up really easily. And then you're just gonna take a scoop of that ricotta mixture and it's gonna go right inside of your shell. And you don't want to overfill them or they're just going to make a mess in the pan. I would say I added in probably about a tablespoon and a half into each shell, maybe a little bit more, but definitely don't overfill them. And you're gonna place them face down in your baking dish. Now I'm just adding that leftover jar of marinara sauce. So this is half a jar of the marinara sauce and it's just going right on top of all of these stuffed shells. And then I'm also adding on some mozzarella cheese. This is probably about two cups of some mozzarella cheese on there. And then you're gonna bake this in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes until all of these shells are heated through. It should be nice and golden brown on top. Now, like I said, if you like ricotta cheese, then you're going to love these stuffed shells. They're really, really easy to put together. Well, that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I share a lot of really quick and easy recipes on my channel, crock pot dinners, and other food related content. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and I will catch you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, it feels were mine. We played hide and seek for hours. Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care